Hi, I'm Cassandra. Welcome to the channel. This weekend, we are going to get stuff done. I find that when I spend one of my two days over the weekend knocking out things on my to-do list, it just sets me up for a more productive and less stressful work week, especially around, you know, breakfast time and getting out the door and then again at dinner time. So it just makes mom life easier. And also since I'm on a weight loss journey, it really helps keep me on track and eating healthy so that I can meet my weight loss goals. So some of the things that I have on my to-do list for this weekend other than grocery shopping which I'm about to go do um, is I'm going to prepare a whole bunch of different types of gifts this week on my campus uh, I'm an instructional coach we are exchanging secret Santa gifts all week long so I need to put stuff together for the person whose name I drew um, I'm going to get a couple more items so I can finish up my team gifts so I can give my team's gifts this week coincidentally um, I uh, my birthday buddy that I drew uh, her birthday is also coming up, so um, she won't know that it's me, but I'm going to prepare some treats and goodies for her birthday so that um, we can celebrate her before we go off to winter break. Uh, I already mentioned meal prepping and ingredient prepping. I need to exchange a shade that I bought from Lowe's. It was a little bit too small um, for one of the bedroom windows that I bought it for. I have already so far kind of organized my pantry and my refrigerator in preparation for going to the grocery store. That happened last uh, night. So let's head on over to the grocery store and then come back here and see what we can get accomplished. Drop a comment down below. How do you like to spend your weekends? Are you a get stuff done person on the weekends? Are, or are you a totally, oh no, weekends are for fun and relaxing. Let me know how you like to spend your time. I like to do, like I said, one day getting stuff done and the other day pretty much just folding laundry and watching YouTube videos. Are you a list person? Because I have lists for everything. I have a list in my phone that I can check off of all the things I want to get done this weekend or today. And then I also have these two lists. So this first list was a grocery list that I went to the store with. So first, I make the list of things that I need for, in this case, meal prepping. And then I went through my pantry, and if you see it crossed off, that's because I already had it, so I didn't need to shop for it. And then as I shopped for items in the store, I just crossed them off as I picked them up. So that was my grocery list. And then at some point during the week, or maybe across multiple days, I had made a list of items from my Secret Santa sheet. I said that I needed to get goodie bags, but I never brainstormed anything to put in them. And then I also have the list for my coworkers' birthday items and the items that I needed to get to make the jingle juice for our potluck. So I had this list with me today in the store also. So I had two lists that I was working off of and checking off as I went. So let me know in the comments below, do you make lists for everything? Do you prefer digital lists like on your phone? Do you prefer pen and paper lists that you can check off? Or do you just store everything right up here and hope that you can remember it? Okay, we're gonna start off with the fun stuff. That's the non-groceries or at least not for the house. So every year we buy our daughters new calendars for Christmas and our youngest daughter is super into creepy dolls and horror movies. So when I saw this one, I thought, that's for her. And then our oldest daughter is into drawing, I think these are called anime or manga characters. They have the big eyeballs. I'm not sure if I have the right thing here, but I think she'll like this calendar. Um, in this section here on the Sign Up Genius, I signed up to make goodie bags for Evie's class's holiday party. So I have these clear bags here. It was more cost effective to get this. This is a 30 pack. I don't remember how much they are, so I'll have to put the prices up here on the screen. Um, to get the cute Christmas ones, they came in packs of 20 and they were $3.50 a piece and I need 22 bags, so I didn't want to pay an extra $3.50 just to use two bags. I got these Santa Eraser Party Favors to go in the bags. I thought these were super cute. I'm kind of going with a red and white theme here because we've got Candy Cane Hershey's Kisses and also regular peppermint candy canes. I may find a few other little items to go in the bag as well, but that's what I was able to get at my HEB. Here I've got gift bags for my Secret Santa gifts 
and my birthday buddy gift. So I've got a few small bags. I thought these were cute and these were only a quarter a piece. And then I have a couple of larger gift bags um, for items that do not fit in the teeny tiny bags here. I also got this red tissue paper for the gift bags. So these bags are what these fun items are going in. So um, my secret Santa and my birthday buddy both put on the sheet that they filled out that their favorite snacks were chips and salsa. So I got these red holiday salted tortilla chips and I got them each salsa and queso. And then for my secret Santa on her form that she filled out, she specifically put fun office supplies. So that's kind of open for interpretation. I couldn't find any fun office supplies in HEB, so I did have to run into Office Depot to get a couple of things, including this. This is called a twirl memo pad. And then these are the Office Depot felt tip pins, which are kind of like the knockoff of flare pins. So that's what qualifies as fun office supplies. And then this is from HEB also. She listed Snickers and hot tamales as her favorite treats. And then for my birthday buddy, aside from the chips and salsa, she specifically said chocolate cupcakes and that her favorite colors are red and green. So that works out with the month of December and what they had out from Office Depot. I got her these Expo markers because on her um, favorite classroom supplies, she put Expo markers and purple file folders. And I could not find a box of solely purple file folders. They had them in every other color, but not purple. And so I went ahead and threw in this fun um, whiteboard eraser. I thought that was cute. And then the last item on the table, this one is actually for me. This is um, just these little one inch book rings. And I've started a fun tradition where I collect all of the Christmas cards that we receive in the mail each year and then I hole punch them and I put them together on a ring. So I don't have the 2020 cards on a ring yet. So I bought some rings so I can display those on the coffee table from last year and then um, this year's cards will go on a ring for next year. Okay, in the drink section here, these three items are for the jingle juice that I'm making for our holiday potluck at work. Um, I just made up the term jingle juice, I think, but I'm just going to make a punch with tropical punch, ginger ale, and pineapple juice, and I'm going to throw some fruit in it. These two bottles of Coca-Cola are for the birthday celebration for my birthday buddy. Um, this is the HEB brand of Coke Zero and a Diet Root Beer from HEB. These are for the house. And then I also got um, this pack of LED bulbs in, let's see, in the daylight which is like a cooler tone. Um, most of our main floor has cool toned lighting, but I noticed the other day when I was filming in the pantry, it's very yellow in there. And upstairs, we still have some warm lights, so I bought those so I can um, change the bulbs as they go out to a cooler tone, which just, I, I like more. Um, I got a pack of paper towels. I like the select -a size version. This is some more toilet paper and another case of water, which, um, this is these two items are just things that I tend to buy every time I if I'm making a trip to the grocery store I'll typically pick up a case of water and a case of toilet paper just so you know we never run out over here in this um, on this counter I've got some frozen items including some chicken wings I'm going to put in the air fryer and some chicken nuggets for the air fryer uh, my daughter Evie discovered this week that she likes chorizo in her eggs, so I picked up some pork chorizo. We were totally out of minced garlic, which I had a jar this size and it does last for months and months, but we were out. Another thing that my daughter Evie discovered that she really likes this week, I don't think she's ever had saltine crackers, but she went to the nurse's office for a stomach ache and the nurse gave her some saltine crackers and she came home and said, saltine crackers are delicious, we should get some. So I went ahead and got some. Um, we, I also used the last of the baggies this week when I was packing the girls' lunches, so I got some more of those. Um, I Here I have some chili seasoning for a beef and veggie chili that I'm making. And I have a packet of brown gravy mix for um, a beef pot roast that I'm making. I got some Houston Blend K-Cups from HEB. It says it's a medium bodied 
pecan, praline, and coconut flavored coffee. All the ones at HEB that are named after Texas cities are really tasty. These parm crisps that are jalapeno flavored are mine and my husband's favorite like cheese crisp that we've been eating since we've been eating low carb or keto-ish. And they ha there was in-store coupons for 50 cents off each bag. So I got a couple of bags of those. This is my girl's favorite rice. So I got some Mahatma yellow rice. Um, you can never have too many diced tomatoes, I feel like. So I got two cans of the four chili seasoned variety and two cans of the Italian style variety. These diced green chilies are for one of the dishes that I'm going to meal prep this week, which is a play on white bean chicken chili. But instead of beans, we're going to use some acorn squash in there. Um, these are for my daughter's uh, Issa's lunches. These are some barbecue Pringles. Okay, over here I've got some cold items and some fruit and veggies. So back here we've got the milk that we like. This is the 2% Mootopia. It's a lactose-free milk. The girls really love whipped topping on their strawberries, so I picked up some more of that. Uh, this is some keto-friendly yogurt that is really thick and creamy and tasty. And then I'm down to just one container of these uh, mini holy guacamole so I got another set of that this week for lunch one day I was at a meeting and on my way back I ran into HEB and grabbed this for my lunch which is a rotisserie chicken salad and it comes with these lettuce cups and it was really delicious so since I was in HEB today I got one for this week of course my children's favorite ever Bob Evans mashed potatoes. I got a couple of bell peppers for some of the dishes I'm meal prepping. A couple of onions for that also. The cubed butternut squash is for the beef and veggie chili. I think that'll be delicious in there. Here is, <laughs> you see I've got some meats thawing out in the, um, in the sink for some meal prep here shortly. These fruits here are actually for the jingle juice that I'm making for our campus's potluck. So I've got I mean, I won't use all of these probably, but I'm gonna put some pomegranate um, kernels in the juice, some fresh cranberries and some sliced orange just to make the juice look, you know, festive and red. And then these berries are for the girls. Hold up, I am on my way. I'm in motion. Let's go to the ocean. Yeah, let's go outside. Out on the beach without freezing. Yeah, isn't that amazing? In Christmas. In case you're new here, I wanted to just take a minute to pop on and introduce myself. My name is Cassandra. I'm a middle-aged mom on a self-care journey. I'm 40-something years old. My husband, Manuel, and I have four children that range in age from 9 to 25. We have two grown children who are out of the house and independent self-sufficient, and two girlies in fourth and sixth grade who of course still live here at home. Uh, I've been on a weight loss journey recently. To date, I've lost just, just over 50 pounds. Um, of course, I'm on a mission to lose at least 100 pounds total. On this channel, I started it for weight loss, accountability, and motivation, and it's kind of turned into a general mom life motivation channel. I post videos every Sunday. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a like and hit the subscribe button down below. That really helps out my channel. I forgot what I was saying. What was I saying? I don't know what I was saying, but let's get back to the meal prep. I'm about to get started on meal prep. I'm going to prepare 
la la la. <laughs> I'm going to prepare two types of chili and one stew for this week that I can eat for dinners and take as leftovers in my lunches this week to work. So I'm going to make a beef and veggie chili and then I'm also going to make um, a beef pot roast in my Ninja Foodie. And then I'm going to make a play on white bean chicken chili, but I'm going to replace the beans with um, acorn squash, diced up acorn squash, to make it just a little bit lower in carbs. So I'm going to get started on all of those. All of these dishes are kind of traditional fall winter dishes. I'm just making some adjustments to some of them to make them more keto friendly. For my very simple Ninja Foodie version of a beef stew. I'm going to take this thawed out stew meat and I'm going to sprinkle on this gluten-free brown gravy mix. I'm going to add in about a tablespoon of minced garlic and then I've roughly chopped up a bell pepper, a zucchini, and a sweet half of a sweet onion. So I'm going to put all that into the Ninja Foodie to make an easy low-ish in carbs keto-friendly beef stew as part of my meal prep. I'm substituting the zucchini in my beef stew in place of potatoes or carrots, which are traditionally in beef stew, just to keep it a bit lower in carbohydrates since I am intentionally trying to lose weight. I'll eat it just like this. My children will have the beef stew probably with a side of mashed potatoes or a side of crackers. Okay, the next thing on the menu that I'm going to meal prep is a beef and veggie chili. I'm gonna start with one pound of ground beef and see how I feel about that. I think that with this amount of squash, that's the perfect amount, but just in case I do have another pound. I'm gonna use this gluten-free chili seasoning, these diced tomatoes, and this is half of a sweet onion. I'm also gonna put in about a tablespoon of minced garlic. First flake of snow is set to fall today it comes to say that christmas is on its merry way and for every the chili is also finished i just simmered this until the butternut squash was tender um the flavor on this is really good and I do recommend the butternut squash in the chili versus the beans. I'm in the middle of an acorn squash saga. I have squash on my clothes. I have squash on the counter. I have squash on the floor. And I knew better. That's why I bought butternut squash pre-cubed. I don't know why I thought I could peel and cube this acorn squash by myself without pre-cooking it first, but the process has been started and I am committed to the process. So this will, in fact, get peeled and cubed, but I do not recommend. Let me repeat, I do not recommend peeling and cubing your acorn squash without pre-cooking it halfway first. Okay, so the last meal that I'm prepping for this week is a white bean chicken chili minus the beans. So this is the one with the uh, acorn squash. Yes. So these are my couple of chicken thighs. The Even though the acorn squash was kind of small, it made a lot of diced up squash. This is half of a sweet onion. This is the blackened chicken breast strips that I'm going to throw in there if I feel like I need more chicken, especially relative to this amount of squash, unless I choose to maybe save half of this for something else, but I really don't know what at this point. I also could not find a white chicken chili seasoning packet that was gluten-free, so I'm just gonna throw in a whole bunch of seasonings and keep my fingers crossed. So we're gonna throw in a little cumin. I'm considering some ranch seasoning, some red pepper flakes, and definitely some uh, uh, garlic powder. And we'll just see what it looks like and go from there. I'm gonna put less liquid this time so it'll be a little bit thicker. Making our Christmas memories. I've been working so much lately. Okay, the white chicken chili 
with the acorn squash came out really good. I think the flavor is awesome on this one. So all in all, if I had to rank these three, I'd go with the white chicken chili, then the beef chili with the butternut squash, and then the beef stew with the zucchini. Again, I just added too much water to this one. I mean, it has gotten thicker, but just flavor wise, I would rank them one, two, and three. These two are definitely worth making. In keeping with our red and white theme, if you can think of anything else red or white that I could put into um, these goodie bags, comment that down below. We still have over a week until we need to take these to school with us, so we're just getting a head start over here. Okay, the last thing on my to-do list for this evening is to hole punch the Christmas cards that we got in the mail last year and put those on a little ring. I haven't printed a cover for it yet, but this was our Christmas card last year. Looking at my to-do list, I got the Secret Santa gifts going, I got the team, oh, the team gifts. I checked off team gifts, but I have not done the team gifts. I did the birthday buddy gifts, I did the meal prep, we started the goodie bags for Evie's class. I did not exchange the shade. Hmm. Well, I'll work on the team gifts maybe tomorrow. I'm calling it quits for tonight. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, click the subscribe button down below, and check back here next Sunday for a brand new Mom Life Motivation video.